Hello everyone, Miss Carrie here from Miss Carrie's Creations. Today I have a spring home decor project for you that I created using stamps and floral dies. It's been a while since I've created a home decor piece here in my channel. They are some of my favorite projects to make, so I thought it would be fun to share this wooden egg project with you that I created. There are a few supplies that you are going to need. I have a wooden egg here that I purchased at Michael's Craft Store, but I have seen them on other websites. This one measures about five inches high. I also have a leaf stamp, some walnut stain, distress ink, and collage paper. You're also going to need some paint if you wish to paint your egg, and some collage medium or a matte gel to apply the collage paper to the egg. We're going to start by painting the egg white. I'm using an opaque white paint with a drying retardant so that I can get a thin coat of paint on the egg. Acrylic paints are thick, full coverage paints that dry quickly and don't allow the wood grain to show through. The drying retarder thins down the paint and creates more of a whitewash look. It also slows down the drying process so that I can get a nice coat of paint without any brush strokes. While the paint is drying, we're going to create that beautiful leaf design that looks like wood burning. It is, in fact, stamped images on collage paper. I'm going to use this leaf stamp and stamp randomly onto the collage paper with walnut ink. Now, make sure you leave plenty of room between each image so that you can cut them out. I bet a few of you panicked when I said, cut them out. We're not going to fussy cut these. I'm just needing to loosely cut or tear around each design so that I can place these on the egg individually. I'm going to get really close to the images when I cut them out so that I don't end up with a bunch of excess collage paper around the leaves, but these are all just going to be really rough cuts. Now you're going to notice that I am creating a pile of these leaves ink side up. This is going to come in handy in a moment. In my previous attempts to make this design, I tried to place all of the collage paper down at once and I just ended up with wrinkles and tears and a huge mess. I learned that it's much easier to place the leaves down one by one. All right, so the egg has been painted, the leaves are stamped and cut out, and now we're going to apply the collage paper to the egg using a collage medium. Here is what the egg is going to look like when we are all finished. Isn't that beautiful? It looks just like we did some wood burning on this wooden egg, when in fact it stamps. I love the way it looks. Before you start applying your collage paper to your egg, here are a few tips to help you out. I found that it was best to start at the top of the egg and work my way down. You want to apply collage medium to the egg in the area where the paper is going to go. Then place the paper onto the medium ink side down. Make sure that it is ink side down. If you place it ink side up, your ink is going to smear everywhere when you add that top coat of collage medium. As you smooth the paper with your brush and some more collage medium, the ink design is going to start to show through that paper. After adding the top leaf, you can work your way around the egg. Now this is going to get a little bit messy, so make sure your work surface is covered or that you're using a glass mat like I have here so that you can wash everything off later. As you add the leaves to the egg, rotate them and change the direction that they are going. This is going to give you a more random look to the design. You also need to be aware that you cannot move them once you have placed them onto the collage medium. On this other egg, I tried to move one of the images and you can see that the ink immediately transferred to the egg. I can just cover this up with a flower, but just know that once the paper is placed down, it's there for good. Alright, I'm going to finish this off camera. 
then I'll return with the finished collaged egg and show you how to add some flowers. So here's the egg completely dry. I let this sit for a few hours while I enjoyed another cup of coffee and started cutting out and assembling my flowers. You might notice a few wrinkles in your collage paper once it dries. If those bother you, you can take some low grit sandpaper and sand over those. Just make sure that your collage medium is completely dry before you sand it or it will peel off the egg. Now that the egg is prepped, I'm going to start creating some flowers. I am using floral dyes today because my Cricut is otherwise occupied making a Easter mandala for one of my online Cricut classes. If you would rather cut your flowers using your Cricut machine, by all means, go ahead and do that. I'm going to start with this anemone or wind flower, which I have cut out with some leaves. To give this flower some depth and color, I'm going to use antique linen in the centers of each of the layers and a little bit of ink around the edges. This has a slight yellow tint and it's going to pair well with the other spring colors I've chosen for my flowers. I've cut two back layers for this flower. In a previous video, I shared how this additional layer gives me a shadow for all of my flowers. Now I'm going to add quite a bit of ink around the edges of the back layer just to make it a little darker. I'm going to be shaping my flowers with some shaping tools. I have owned these for many, many years, but I've never showed them on video. I'm going to be using them with a foam mat to give each of these petals a little bit of shape. Now if your flower dies create embossing lines, be careful not to press too hard with the shaping tools or they will remove those lines. The shaping tools are going to give these flowers quite a bit of dimension, which is what we want for a home decor piece. The wind flower is going to be the focal point and I want it to be as realistic as possible with the shaped petals and dimensional layers. I'm going to use some foam tape between each of the petal layers. I started with those back two layers. One of those back layers has been rotated 180 degrees so that those darker edges stand out and give me a nice shadow layer. I'm going to layer all of the petal layers with foam tape so that I have a nice full flower for my egg. The centers of these flowers were cut from black cardstock. I'm going to adhere the larger piece in the center with adhesive and then I'll layer the second one on top with foam tape. The final center piece has already been decorated with some prills. I'm going to layer that on top and now the wind flower is complete. For the rest of the floral pieces I have some little white daisies and some bluebells. To create the bluebells, I layered two of this die cut with a foam dot in between after I added some shaping and shading. I also have some pink pattern paper flowers with a pearl in the center. To shape these flowers, I used the tool on the back of the petals to create a curl, then flipped it over and used the shaping tools to give them a nice dome shape. The larger and the smaller flowers are layered together with some foam tape and a little pearl is glued in the center. To create a little bit of a distressed look, I brushed some vintage photo ink on the center of the pearl and the flower. Now that all the flowers are assembled, I'm going to start layering all of them onto the egg. I'm going to start with that windflower or anemone and I'm going to adhere it to the egg with industrial foam tape. This can be found at any hardware store. It has a stronger bond than your paper crafting foam and it sticks really well to collage medium or paint. Next to the egg, I'm going to layer the two larger leaves. I have only placed foam tape at the base of the leaf so that the tips stick out around the flower. With home decor pieces, you don't need to glue everything down flat. You can let those leaves stick up off the egg to give it a realistic feel. Now I'm going to add the smaller flowers. 
I've placed my egg onto a glass jar to make it a little easier to work with and bring it close to the camera. I'm going to start with three daisies in the lower right and place them onto the egg with a little foam tape. After adding the daisies, I added some of the pink pattern flowers to the lower right. Then I rotated the egg to add some flowers to the upper left. I'm forming a diagonal pattern with my flowers, making sure that most of the weight is in the lower right. This is going to give me a really nice backdrop for that windflower. The bluebells are also getting added onto the beds of flowers using foam tape. I'm tucking them under some of the other flowers so that they don't look like they're just floating there. Now I cut my flowers from cardstock and pattern paper. If you're worried about the paper holding up, you can cut these from fabric, felt, or foam. All right, now that all the flowers are added, I'm going to tuck some leaves into all of those flower layers. I'm going to use liquid adhesive for this application and a pair of tweezers to help me with placement. I've cut the leaves from a few colors of green pattern paper and inked them with two colors of green ink. Using a variety of greens and grays to create your leaves will give your flowers some more dimension and depth. I've also cut these leaves using three different dye collections that I own. If you are like me, you probably have a variety of leaf dyes or leaf cricket cuts. This type of project is a great excuse to pull some of those out and start using them. Now that I've tucked a few leaves into my flowers, I'm going to bring in these two sprigs that I cut. On the tips, I added some yellow prills to give them a little texture. And I'm going to tuck these in behind the flower. I really like how all of this is coming together. I'm going to continue to add a few more leaves to this design. Just like with the flowers, I am adding more leaves at the lower right to create a little bit more weight there. You are also going to see that I fold or curl some of the leaves and I test out their placement before I adhere them in place. I'm also layering leaves on top of leaves and on top of flowers. This gives an illusion of depth. Now, you don't need to worry about filling in every little spot with the leaves. I don't know about you, but my flower gardens have a few bare spots where the sunlight peeks through. It's okay to leave a space or two between the flowers and let that wooden egg show through. All right, we are nearing the end of this project. This project had a few steps involved, but I like how I was able to work on other parts of the project while another part was drying. As the paint dried, I could stamp the images. As the collage medium dried, I could assemble my flowers. It all came together much quicker than I thought, and I'm loving the results so far. All of those layers of leaves and flowers tucked under that large windflower are so pretty. Now at this point, you can call it finished, but I wanted to add a little bit more texture. I debated on adding a bow at the top, but decided on some jute twine loops instead. These loops are created just like the loops you create for your scrapbook pages or cards, with one exception. After looping the twine around my fingers, I tied a knot at the base of the loops to make sure that they stayed secure on this home decor piece. One set of loops is tucked at the base of the flower. I added a little adhesive to the loops before sticking them in place. The smaller set of loops are going to be made just like the larger sets. I just did a few less loops and a smaller knot. These are tucked at the top of the flower and held in place with adhesive. Not only do these loops give me some texture, but they're also hiding that foam tape under the flower. Let's take a look at this sweet little floral egg we created today using our stamps and floral dies. Isn't it just gorgeous? 
I love the addition of the collage paper and how it looks just like wood burning, but it was so much easier to do. That big bold windflower or anemone at the top of the bed of flowers is perfectly placed with that little bit of texture from the twine. This is going to look great sitting on an Easter table or up on a shelf with my spring decorations. I'm going to share a few close-up photos of this project so that you can see it in a little more detail. Can you believe that this was created with a simple wooden egg, some collage paper, a simple leaf stamp, and some floral die cuts? I'm betting you have most of this in your paper crafting collection. I love finding new ways to use what I have and home decor is one of the projects I love creating with my paper crafting supplies. I hope that this project inspired you to try something new and create a spring decoration for your home. If you have any questions about this project or the supplies I listed below, feel free to leave me a comment. I hope that you have a wonderful week and I can't wait to see what you create.